Pace, today is Wednesday, the 30th, which makes today's math, understanding cipher, all being born to understanding. Understanding is a crystal clear picture which is drawn up in the mind from knowledge and wisdom. It is the best part, okay? So use your understanding, okay, and, and, and create a beautiful cipher for yourself, a beautiful universe, a beautiful... Uh, kingdom okay mentally as well as physically and you'll see that others will understand your understanding and that's equality peace okay peace welcome back to the united mean god cast i am lord jamal and i'm digger digger right about now in the house with us we have special guests the sister that prescribe the uh, cleanse for you and I. Right. The one and only Herb Alchemist from Amas.com. Did Thank I say that right? Amash? Amas? Amas H S. Amas. Amas H S dot com. Amas H S dot com. Peace. And Thank also you. joining her from the African History Network, the president of of such network, Michael Imhotep. Welcome, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So, wait, whoa, whoa, real quick. Before we forget, uh, do you have something for me, Digger? Yes, I do. Because you you just taking too long. <laughs> you, you missed last segment. I know, I was supposed to do and, it the last segment. And, and <laughs> you're supposed to act like it's a surprise, but fuck that, I know about them. And my dog just chewed mine up, so can I please have my, my present, please? Okay, so I did a showcase last uh -huh. weekend out in Queens, and I met a gentleman who is the head of um, Global View Marketing, I believe is okay. the name. Um, he goes by the name of Nate. Shout out to him. And he gave me these. What pray tell did he give you? <laughs> Black Power earbuds. Wow. <laughs> one for me and one for you. Why, thank you. <laughs> you know, my, 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 my little dog, my, my new Bruno Boston, he just chewed up a pair of earbuds just the other day. I want to, you know. But this is right on time. And how uh, how cool are those? With yeah, the, the with black the uh, I remember I used to rock the pick back right. in the days. The pick with the oh, with the black those power awesome, fist. Right? Those are dope. Yeah, I used uh -huh. to rock them in my fro. He actually had school. he had he had black fist and white fist, and I was like. Um, the oh, wife, you, oh, I'm like the white fists are yeah. kind of like pointless. No, no, like no. It, it, it's it's, it's not convincing. <laughs> we don't white power. We don't white power. We don't we don't. Nah, nah. I I get it. Some people like they're all you know their electronics yeah. all you no, know no, no, unison no, 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 no. monochromatic. Yeah. But Mono, yeah, yeah, we need to all keep, black everything. We need to keep that black mm -hmm, energy. Mm -hmm. You can't be pro black and with white uh, power headphones. <laughs> oh God. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> He will find a way. <laughs> we are we we are back and we have our special guest uh this week, Herb Alchemist and uh Michael Imhotep. Yes. So how are you doing, people? Tell me about yourself. Um You know, what you you would describe yourself as what? Like a herb doctor and an herb alchemist, I guess you describe yourself <laughs> She's as. She's a yes? doctor of many things. Wow. Mm. You, that's, I'm honored, for one. I haven't received my doctorate as of yet. I am in a doctoral program for uh, the university. I don't of need you to, 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 to get any, but, any, any, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Go okay. Ahead. I yeah. just, you know, for, for the sake of people who, who get that word, who are very serious about that word. Right. Did she you go know? to Cornell? What kind of doctor? <laughs> yeah, no. I am in a, I, I'm becoming a, a minister, and so I'm getting my ministerial doctorate mm. from the University so. of Metaphysics. And um, but it's a process. But I am a Yadi gal, I would say, for one. Um, I yeah, am, Yadi gal. <laughs> yes. You're born Jamaica? You're born Yad? I'm Trinidadian. Mm. Trinidadian okay. American. My mother is from New Orleans. And her ancestry leads back into West, West Africa, but she's also Creole, you know, and um, she's also part Cherokee, right. Native American. So, and then on my father's side, um, my grandfather's lineage leads back into East India. Mm. Trinidad is 40% East Indian. 
about 30% West African. It has, you know, some Chinese, a few others, Spanish. Um, but on the Yard family, I'm, I, my, my name is actually Yardy. Like growing up, I was Brittany Yardy. Mm. You know, so I was always. That's cool. <laughs> even before I knew I think I've that s- I Yardy. I saw that name on, on mm-hmm. Facebook on or something Facebook, like yeah. yeah, there you go. So even before I knew about Yardy culture, I've been a Yardie. That's all I've known myself to be in. Mm. And I was that girl that you could find climbing trees. You know, I would <laughs> go in my okay. backyard and pick the berries off the tree and, you know, recycle old bottles of sp- uh, body spray and try to make my own with berries. And, totally. you know, I was just always in the dirt. Always drinking out the coconut. Leaves. <laughs> <laughs> now I do. I, was, I didn't have coconuts growing up, but I surely do today. That's but, uh, yeah, so, you know, my father was a sea vegetation farmer. Uh, in Trinidad, and my grandmother was a medicine woman. Mm. And my grandmother was illiterate. However, you brought her anybody that wasn't well, they wasn't going to leave her house in that same condition. Mm. Mm. And then my mother, on my mother's side, um, my grandmother was a a nurse, you know. (laughs) And um, so I'm just pulling from my ancestry. You all mentioned ancestry. Now, did you sit at their feet or or is this just something no. that's kind of in your DNA? It's in my DNA. Mm. Yeah, I never got to meet my grandmother, unfortunately. She transitioned when she was 89. I'm also an 89er. Shout out to all 89ers. Right, but she's know? within you. But she's within me. I'm mm-hmm. a reflection of her. I am mm-hmm. the future of her. So, yeah, I'm just pulling from my from the foremothers from my lineages. Okay, before we continue, Michael Imhotep. Yes. The African History Network. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's corrects wrong behavior. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. I uh, do radio in Detroit, actually, 9, 10 a.m. Superstation in Detroit, host the African History Network show. You have, like, a radio voice. You got a good oh, radio thank voice. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you. You sound comfortable on the <laughs> mic. So. I, oh, no, I, just, I just got I believe you. I believe you. W-B-L-S. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yeah, I'm very comfortable on the radio. That's uh, what's I've up. been doing radio for eight years now. Uh, I'm in uh, some documentaries. Um uh, the Black Friday documentaries from director Rick Mathis deal with economic empowerment mm. for African Americans. Uh, Elementary Genocide Part 3, dealing with uh, fighting against the school to prison pipeline and taking control of African American children's education from uh, mm. director Raheem Shabazz out of Atlanta. Uh, Resurrecting Black Wall Street, the blueprint from uh, um, Dr. Boyce Watkins, yourblackworld.net. Uh, so I do lectures as well. I have about 40 of my lectures on DVD. I've been studying history, uh, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship for about 26 years now. Uh, and I'm, uh, you know, I live in Detroit. Uh, our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, we have one million followers on really? Facebook. Absolutely, one million followers on Facebook. We reach people one all million around. twenty thousand now. Well, it's, yeah, <laughs> well, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a million. <laughs> it's a million. So we reach people yeah. uh, around the world, and uh, you know, I interview a lot of the African Center scholars. I deal with uh, different topics. Uh, pertaining to the African American community and uh, African people globally as well. So you know, it's a lot that we do. So when you say network, yes, what do we mean by? You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like sure. is this a network of well different? Well, it started out uh, companies, media outlets. Well, well, yeah, I'm gonna have a YouTube platform, thirty eight thousand on YouTube, million on Facebook. I uh, had the WordPress, uh, we had the Blog Talk Radio, thousands of followers on Blog Talk. Right. Uh, we're on uh, Blog Talk, iTunes, CastBox. So, so put all, all those things place. together, that's your oh, network. Oh, yeah, we're all over the place. But I started out posting videos on YouTube just mm-hmm. trying to educate our people. Right. And then people started asking me, well, where can we get these videos? I said, okay. So people said, you need to start selling them. All right. So then I set up distributorships. I got set up agreements with different distributorships, got in touch with uh, one of my teachers, Dr. Linda Jeffries, put me in touch with Professor James Small, uh, who was another one of my teachers, and uh, set up distributorships. But then um, I started doing my own lectures as well. So, you know, now that's largely what I focus on. But uh, I do uh, broadcast on Blog Talk Radio, broadcast on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation. Facebook live broadcast. We're on YouTube, so we're all over the place. Hmm. Then I write yeah. articles as well. Let me ask a question because yes. I, I feel like the term "hotep" is is be, is starting to get a very like negative connotation. Like I'm I'm actually you know when I look at different things on social media, sure, you know it's almost being used as like an insult. It's like a fucking circus. 
going on in the so-called black conscious community, man. Uh, hotel, hold down. Mm. Well, it is being used as an issue. Right. Yeah, so, some people, yes. can, you, can you, like, explain, like, definitively, like, sure. the, the term, you know, how the term was derived and what it actually represents? Okay, well, the term hotel comes from the metal netter. Metal netter is the ancient language of the ancient Egyptians. What uh, Egypt is not what we called it. Uh, that's an Arabic word, is uh, Kemet. Kemet is one of the original names, meaning the land of the blacks. You also see the uh, name Tameri, which means the beloved land. Hotep is an offering of peace in the Metal Net language. Mm. It has become uh, corrupted by a certain segment of the African American population okay. that are into some other things. And uh, they use it as a term to demean the quote unquote conscious community. Those hoteppers, yeah, I've heard that. I, I see yeah. that a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But we don't say those what up doors. Right. See, we don't say that. So they, they use it in, in, in a, a negative uh, light. And uh, they use it to demean a certain certain segment of the African-American population. Uh, and usually this segment is trying to bring the light and the knowledge to the masses. OK, so uh, but uh, you, so usually a lot of times when I hear people use it derisively, I, I, I know they don't know what it really means. Right. OK, so they're I telling like on themselves. Lo- I, f- I feel like a lot of people don't know. What no, it they means. don't. And then you well, get into Imhotep. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, well, the, but the, see, the thing master, is largely. But, so many different things. Yeah. But the thing largely is we've been robbed of our history and culture. Mm. So you can have a small segment of the population oftentimes being financed by Europeans that will use that term in a corruptive manner. Right. To demean others. OK. And then Imhotep was the father of medicine. Imhotep was one of the greatest people Ashe. who ever lived in, in human history. Imhotep means he who comes in peace. Mm-hmm. OK. And he was a uh, uh, designer of the Step Pyramid or um, Mastaba for uh, Pharaoh Zosier or Nesubiti Zosier. Because we ain't call him pharaohs, and the Subiti would be the correct term. Um, he was a philosopher. Um, he was um, uh, an architect, mathematician. Okay, and he was known as the world's first multi genius as well. Okay, so that's M. Hotep. And okay. if you read uh, uh, Dr. Maleficati Asante, has a book dealing with ancient Egyptian philosophers. And one of them he talks about is M. Hotep in there. This is before the, uh, uh, Aristotle, Socrates, and and all these Europe, all these Greek philosophers come along. Of they course. studied his teachings. Of course, yeah, of course. they studied you know his this. teachings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shout out to M. Tell Hotep me for quickly a, a, a little bit about your, you know, your beginnings. You know, like what, sure. what led you on this road? Absolutely. And I want to ask the sister the same question. Well, I, I started in college. You know, I graduated from Wayne State University in 1994, but I started in, I started studying in college uh, in 1992. The Malcolm X movie came out. That blew everybody away. I read the autobiography then. I should have been studying for finals. I was reading the autobiography of Malcolm Metz. Couldn't put it down. Mm. You had uh, conscious hip-hop led me to that, to that direction. You know, you had Brand Nubians. Uh, you oh, know, Brand shit. Nubian, uh, uh, Slow Down. You had X-Clan, Public Enemy, all this stuff at that same time, elevating our conscious level. Mm. You had the TV show A Different World, elevating our conscious level every week. And then uh, in the in the conscious hip-hop music, you had snippets of Malcolm X, snippets of uh, Louis Farrakhan. You had them referencing Osiris and Isis and Harriet Tubman, all this stuff, right? So all this is coming at the same time. So then, I, so, so then I'm studying, and then at the same time, you know, I'm majoring in business administration, and I see the intersection between African history, African-American history, African culture, and economic empowerment. Usually the brothers I knew who had the knowledge of African history didn't understand economic empowerment and entrepreneurship. And the brothers in the business school didn't understand our history and culture. Mm. Okay, so I can speak both of those languages. It's my degrees in business administration. I can go from the boardroom to the lecture hall. You yeah. know, I speak both of those languages. So that's what led me to that. And then when I started studying and I was and I was inspired in, in college, I started writing in college and selling my writings on campus. Mm. You know, it was, the, it was the TV show A Different World that led me to the Pan-African Student Union. Mm-hmm. at Wayne State University because I saw them talking about Pan-Africanism and the Pan-African Student Union on a different world and they were involved in an anti-apartheid uh, uh, rally. So then I sought out the Pan-African Student Union on campus. That's how I got involved into that. Wow. You know, so so imagery is so important. You know, Absolutely. You know, whatever's disseminated becomes imitated and, 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 and what you read, see, and hear influences the way you think, feel, act, and behave. So this is why we have to have control of our media to be able to right. fight fight against what's going on right now. Mm. Yeah, that's that's something Frame that we're of very, reference I talk we're about very a passionate lot. about. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, sis, so your your grandma, um, 
influenced you to you know get you know i guess get more with the uh, natural remedies and things like that like what inspired you to well to be honest like i mentioned i never met my grandmother um it's more so my father. Oh, right, right, my right. father okay. told me and once it came out of me, my father ended up telling me about, you know, my family lineage. So that's why I mentioned I have to mention that. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, like I mentioned, I was just always connected to the earth. Like my, I loved fruit growing up. That was okay. my favorite thing. Like you could always catch me in a tree eating a mango or eating some cherries or I would go on hunts and I, I grew up in Palmdale, California. It's like an hour north of LA mm. and uh, in the desert, you know, the high desert. And so, you know, we'd go looking for, for fruit trees and stuff like that. It was before, you know, a lot of people from LA began to move up there. And so I just kind of live like that's just my life. Just and, try it. You know, so yeah. what was what was the first thing that you put together that you realized, like, wait a minute, this works better than something I would right. buy from the store? So when I was in high school, I ran track. Um, I gained a little Wait weight. a minute. You're not still in high school because you look like you're 16. <laughs> right. <laughs> no. Talk about melanin 16 magic. Plus you're not 12. You're not still in high school? <laughs> right. No. That oh. melanin is popping. Thank you. I thought you were 16. Not at all. I can't oh. be a 16 year old right now. <laughs> no, but what I was saying is that I wasn't, I wasn't, I was running track, right? I decided to run track because I was gaining a little weight and I was like, oh, I can't, I don't want to, you know get too out of shape and I felt unhealthy so I was like let me run let me join the track team I was 11th grade and I ended up getting a staph infection mm. a very deadly bacterial disease it is a killer to be yeah. honest with you. if it stays in your blood long enough it can kill you a lot of people actually die in jail um, from staph infections mm. die all over the world from mm-hmm. staph infections mm-hmm. I actually uh, have a friend who who had a cousin who passed away from a staph infection and so uh, I didn't know what it was initially. Thought it was a spider bite. You know, I was trying to drain it myself. It, just, it wouldn't stop draining. I had it in two different locations on my body, and uh, you know, my mom took me to the doctor, and they let me know what was going on. They let me know it wasn't just a spider bite, or it could have started as a, a spider bite, but mm-hmm. it had matriculated into staph infection. We all have wow. staph on our our skin. Mm-hmm. It's a natural. Um, it's naturally on our skin, but it, be- it can become infected. Okay. And so um, they gave me antibiotics. It went away within a few weeks. I was like, okay, I'm good. And um, so then I noticed about a month or so later, another one had returned and in a different location. So I go back to the doctor like, it's here again. What do I do? You know, because at that time I began to research what was going on. And, and, you know, or before that, I, you know, after they told me I had it, I went and looked it up. And I was like, oh, thank God that was over, you know, but then it came back. And so it was like this cycle. I would go to them, you know, get the antibiotics coming. And so I decided to take my life into my own hands because I realized that my life was at stake. Right. It was a deadly infection. It just would not stop. And so and I And this if, Western be, medicine was just it not, was not working. It. Mm-hmm. And it was causing other infections. Mm. I would excuse me, fellas, I would get yeast infection. You know, it was just upsetting my system. From antibiotics. Me. No, and that's that's they, they no, I've heard of yeast system. infections before. That's very, very common with women taking yeah. antibiotics. Yeah. Right. That's and a side so, effect. And so um I began to research, you know, and um go to the library, you know, go to the internet, go to you know and research what was a natural remedy for a staph infection. Come to find out, one little baby herb, turmeric, turmeric root was the number one herb for treating a staph infection. Mm. Shout so, out turmeric. Shout turmeric out to turmeric. Yeah, a lot of shit. I was just <laughs> yeah. gonna say that turmeric, turmeric is a motherfucker. Like when yeah, I just, I, I don't turmeric. think there's any food that I eat that I don't uh, cook, <laughs> put turmeric, turmeric. in it. Yeah. Absolutely, and so I began to work with turmeric um, and I'm Trinidadian, so we naturally eat curry, which is, you know, has mm-hmm. turmeric in curry. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, wow, I've been taking this my whole life, but I didn't realize it could save my life. And so wow. I just began to work with it. I made a tea. I had a little cayenne. I made a little poultice with some honey. And I applied it to the boils and I drank it. And within hours, it was gone. Amazing. It was gone. I showed my sister, like, look, you know what the doctors attempted to do in weeks? It was one little herb mm. so, so I knew at that moment for the, I knew that I had found what I wanted to do 
with my life Dope. and i worked with turmeric for years like four years i would make everything out of turmeric. <laughs> right. Right. every every problem that people would come to me with i got oh, the turmeric, yeah. turmeric. turmeric just rub a little turmeric on turmeric that motherfucker root. turmeric it was turmeric root for years i would say probably for the first five years of me being the herbalist wow was that was your turmeric. Turmeric. <laughs> that was your answer that was your cure-all <laughs> Really was. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that that's what really catapults it me into uh into the medicine work. That's dope. That's well listen, dope. when we come back, you know, we're gonna talk about, you know, just more about health, different types of health. Uh, cause I know well, I know you have your products, number one, uh, that deal with male and female health reproductive health all that type of stuff so i want to talk a little bit about that we're going to talk about why you know what you two have going on as far yes. as the return of the gods uh that um you know Dick and I are we'll be, to be participating a part of. in yeah. yeah yes and uh yeah we'll get into all of that when we come back Why do we fall? Two fingers together is the real peace sign, y'all. Brand Nubian peace gear. Hoodies. T-shirts. Snapbacks. Available at hoodgee.com. Get yours today. <laughs> 